OK, welcome back. Windows booted after it had installed as the last part of its installation and um, we did some basic tweaks and now we've rebooted and we're in Windows proper for the first time. We did the tweaks including setting Windows to classic mode uh, so that it's a little bit less resource hungry in terms of graphics and shadowed menus and all sorts of bits and bobs like that, animated things. So we're on a basic PC here, which is what I always like to have, everything very basic. Now if you remember we cre created the C boot partition as part of the setup and we left the rest of the drive, we didn't partition it because I said we could do it afterwards in Windows XP and let's do that now. So we go to start, control panel, choose administrative tools, choose computer management, just minimise this window there's our computer management section and if you look there's the menu and you can see under the storage section here you've got disk management just click on that and the disk management section appears on this side okay and as you can see there's just the one partition the C primary partition which is listed there and this shows you graphically the drives that we have and as you can see we've got there, our disk zero which is our hard drive in fact it was 78 gig to start with after creating the C partition it's dropped down to 76 gigabyte this is due to the, what, the nature of fat formatting it's a very complicated subject to do with presenting cylinders and sectors as equal sizes and you do lose some of the drive space when you start to create partitions and format but don't worry about that doesn't mean you've lost any of the disk OK, so you can see there's our C drive, 11.72 gigabytes after it's been formatted to FAT32 and there's our 64 gigabytes of unallocated drive space remaining. So what we're going to do is right click on that, new partition and a wizard appears. Ooh, there we are, look, this wizard helps you create a partition on a basic disk. This is easy peasy stuff. So what we do is we click next. We want an extended partition. There we are, extended partition. Next. And we'll create the extended partition, the whole size that's remaining, available to us 66158 megabytes. OK, there we are. Click finish. And you can see now it's gone green, which means if you look at the legend down there, it's free space. OK, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create logical drives on that. Right click, choose new logical drive. OK, again the wizard appears. This wizard helps you create a partition on a basic disk. OK, just zoom out. OK, so we click next. And we are going to create a logical drive, which is uh, the only option here. As you can see, a logical drive is a volume you create within an extended partition on a master boot record basic disk. OK, here we go. Next. OK, now if we choose to, f to make this partition the entire size of the disk remaining, and I click Next, then we're presented with an option to give it a drive letter. It's going to default to E because the CD-ROM is currently D. Don't worry about that. They can be changed later, the uh, drive letters. Or you can tick do not assign, but let's just leave it at that because I'll show you how to change the drive letters. OK, click next. Now you'll notice when it comes to the file system that we can choose, we can only choose NTFS. OK, so if you step back and back again, if we make this the maximum FAT32 size, which is 32 gigabyte, 32000, and then click next, keep it as E, we'll change that after we've done this. Next. Now, in the file system type, format this partition with the following settings file system NTFS, but we can choose FAT32. Now, the allocation unit size we don't want default, right? we want 64k. Go for nice big clusters. Allocation unit size basically means the clusters, okay? which means that we'll have as little wastage as possible and there'll be less read and write commands when we're reading mostly large audio files, which will be several megabytes in size minimum. OK, so 64K, we won't give it a volume name yet, we can do that later, and tick Perform a Quick Format, OK, and click Next.
there you go, it shows you the details it's kind of going to give you. Click finish. Oh, there we go. Let's just drag that out a little bit. Okay, so you can see now that's the first logical drive we've created. New volume E, 31.25 gigabytes, fat 32. Okay, that leaves 33.6 gigabytes remaining. Again, new logical drive. Let me just check that it was visible. Excellent. Here we go. New logical drive. Click next. Again, it's logical drive. Click next. Again, we can't have this size, otherwise we won't be able to format it as FAT32, so make this 32000. Next, leave the drive letter. Next, again, FAT32, default 64K. Perform a quick format, remember to tick that, and click Next. Present you with the finalised details of what it will be. You selected the following settings. Click Finish. OK, there's our second 32 gig. So we've got two 32 gig audio partitions now. OK, and that leaves us a little 2 gig partition of remaining space. So let's format that. Put a logical drive in there. So zoom out. Click Next. Logical drive. Click Next. Use the entire amount. Click Next. Leave everything as it is there. Click Next. FAT32. But let's leave this one on default because we can use this little 2 gigabyte partition for samples and things like that. OK. Perform a quick format, make sure that's ticked, and click Next. There's the details. Click Finish. And there's our final 2.11 gigabyte. Let me just drag that out a bit so you can see them all. There, that's better. So, there's our boot drive C. Now what we could have done, because as you notice we've got this remaining little 2 gigabyte partition, which, which I think would be very useful for storing samples. And 2 gigabyte is a lot for samples, unless you use something like Giga Sampler and Giga Piano and you've got like, you know, tons and tons of samples. But for most people, 2 gig is a lot for samples, yeah? We've got two 32 gigabyte audio drives with large clusters on our boot drive. Now what we could have done was make the C drive partition a little bit bigger. Uh, if you remember, we chose 12 gigabytes for its size. After making these two 32 gig partitions, that left us 2 gig left over. So what I could have done is added that 2 gig into the initial C drive we created when we first set up XP. I could have made the partition 15 gigabytes, and that would have left us with roughly two 32 gig drives. But I mean, it's no big shakes to have that little bit left over. And as I say, these little extra uh, volumes do or partitions do come in useful for storing things. And again. If you have to wipe your C partition and reinstall Windows, samples that you've stored in here, in, in the, uh, the little fat partition there at the end of the disk, will be nice and safe and won't have to be moved around or anything. Which, if you're using programs like Battery, if you move your samples and then you open Battery, it has to search for every single sample. And other programs do that as well, like uh, the Contact, the NI Sampler and things, OK? OK, so that's our disk partitioned. We now have to change our drive letters, OK? So, choose the CD-ROM, right-click, change drive letters and paths. OK, it's D is selected, change, and make it the first available one after this new volume here, which is G. OK, that's F, that's G. So choose H, OK, it. changing the drive letter of a volume might cause a problem. OK, no, no big shakes at the moment because we've installed nothing and blah blah blah. So, yes, slight pause there. And the CD-ROM is now H. OK, can you see that down there? It's now H. So now we can make the, t the next disks after the s partitions after the C, we can make that D, we can make F, E, and we can make the little tiny final partition that we created there, which at the moment is G. Yeah, oops, let's drag that out a bit more. That G, we can make that F. Okay. And then we can set the CD ROM to be G. Okay, so let's go across here. So 
and as C, we've changed the CD-ROM to be H, which follows on from G, the last partition there. So now let's change the drive letter for the first audio partition here, E. Change drive letters and paths, E is selected, as you can, oops, E is selected as you can see there, okay, so we do change, assign the following drive letter, D, because no longer is the CD-ROM holding that drive letter, okay, the warning comes up again, that uh, you might cause problems, choose yes. Okay, so now we've got C, D, right, let's change the next one, which is currently F. Right click, change drive letters and path, can you see that alright? Yep, change drive letters and paths, the dialog box opens again, there's F selected, we choose change, we select E, OK, it. the warning comes up, click yes, OK, that volume is now E, now we need to change that little volume there, make that F, so right click, the menu appears, change drive letters and paths, our dialog box pops up. Oops, there it is. As you can see, G is the drive we chose and it's selected. And we click the change button as our little dialog box appears. And we choose F just here. OK, the warning appears. Click yes. And now our drives run in sequence and it's less confusing. Okay, C is the boot drive, D first audio drive, E second audio drive, F sample partition. And our CD ROM now needs to be changed from H. So we right click, change drive letters and paths. Just there, yeah. And the dialog box appears. As you can see, H is highlighted. That's CD ROM. You click change. And just here, choose G and OK it and click Yes. OK, so that's all done. Now, if we close this, just zoom out, close this whole computer management section, and now if we go to the Start button, let me just zoom, zoom out again. OK, Start My Computer. Yeah, which it may look like this when you first look at it, yeah, with the discs as images, yeah. All you have to do is go up here and choose tiles. That's probably what it will be defaulted to, tiles. It'll look like that. Your little drive pictures for the drives and things. You can change that to details, and then you can see the discs and you can see their size here and their free space here. Now we've got our C boot drive. D and E audio drives, little 2 gigabyte sample partition, C, D, E, F and G down here, our CD drive. OK, alright, so we've done our partitioning and we've created our drives. If you want to give these a name like audio drive or something, you can right click and you can choose rename. Look, just there, yeah. Rename and it just sort of goes like the standard Windows renaming, it goes blue, and you can type in audio one if you like. Click anywhere in the background, it becomes audio one. Right click on that, audio two, or press enter, or right click anywhere on the background, and it'll set that. Right click again, I'll call this spare. So we've got local disk, I can change that as well. I'll call it Windows disk, which might be easier for the uh, for the guy whose machine this is, because he's very unfamiliar with computers. So now you can see my Windows disk, my audio disk 1, my audio disk 2, my spare disk, and my CD drive.
pictures down there. And there we have it. There's our drives, there's the free space, everything's lovely jubbly. Okay, so that's our partitioning of the drive. Okay, so let's close that. Okay, now we can move on. And uh, what do we need to do? Well, we need to install the graphics drivers. Uh, we need to install DirectX 9. We need to add our VIA chipset patch. And we need to do a few XP tweaks.